Caitlin Clark said that she's uh, going into the WNBA draft. Yeah, good riddance. Get out of there. <laughs> Let someone else shoot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess there was the possibility, and she said that to us last year at this time, <laughs> that maybe she would come back for another year. Now, I'm glad that she's not. But she did have the free year due to COVID, and then you come back. Like, you don't want to wear out your welcome. You, know, you just don't want to stay longer we all have had those guests that come over, or we've been the guest that goes to a party, and you're like, when are you, when are you going to leave? And I always mention somebody who's a really good friend of mine. Uh, he and his family stayed till the very end a couple of years ago, and I was actually vacuuming the basement, <laughs> and, uh, and Brian lifted his feet up. Oh, we're naming names. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I'm, I, I, I have the vacuum out. They're watching TV. Nobody else is there at the party. We're all cleaning up. They're still downstairs. They're watching a movie. And I get the vacuum out. I mean, I got to be in bed. And so I'm doing that. He lifted his feet up, and I just vacuumed under his feet. They stayed for probably an hour longer. Yeah, Paul? If you think about it, it makes sense. Like, Caitlin Clark got the record. She's going to get another one this weekend, the biggest of all time, with Pete Maravich. The NSA tournament, finish at home. Four years, the record's hers. If she stays another year with the COVID record, it, it would kind of, I wouldn't say it would taint the record at all, but it would make it have a weird feel to it. Like it would, she put it so out in the stratosphere, but no one else in the future would have that fifth year choice, I wouldn't think. Yeah, you just don't want an asterisk by this. You know, she, she's done what she's done. She's left an indelible mark, the impact, the scoring record, all of those things. And she has a big game coming up this weekend against Ohio State. She'll be drafted by Indiana. And uh, so you're going to have a great guard and a great big person there uh, in the middle. And uh, Asia Wilson, or is it Leah Boston? Leah, Leah Boston. Boston. Okay. But uh, Leah Boston will be the, uh, the center there. And then you're going to have, uh, you know, Caitlin there in Indiana. Uh, you know, you can drive from Iowa. I don't know how long it is from Indy to Iowa, but I'm going to guess they're, uh, they'll have quite a convoy going in there. Yeah, Paulie? That's five and a half hours, That's depending on nothing. Uh, I-80 West. That's nothing. 365 miles. Yes. Yes, Todd? Yes, I can concur. Five and a half hours. That's oh, what I was raising my hand about. Oh, okay. Yeah, Marvin? I think this is going to be very LeBron-esque, his first game at Sacramento, his rookie year, where it's going to be a ton of media coverage. They're going to have like almost like a college game day type set, but an NBA game day, all yeah, but that. they never should have had LeBron make his debut in Sacramento. Like, when you think about it, that all this hype, and then he went to Sacramento. So it's late night, and you want to put him on display. You want it East Coast. You want everybody to be able to watch something like that. Indiana, they already have their schedule, I believe, and they don't, they don't open up against any – they're not in a major market, are they, that first game? I know they play Brooklyn, and, and that's in Brooklyn, so not in the Garden, but uh, they'll play the Liberty in Brooklyn. Their first game might be at home. Does that sound right? Last time we looked? Yes, Paulie. The NN Fever's first game, should be Caitlin Clark's first game, will be at the Connecticut Sun. Okay, that's a big deal. I bought six tickets a month ago. Okay. Well, that's a big deal. Uh, that'll, that'll get a great turnout there, and it'll, it'll resemble, resemble what's happened with Caitlin Clark when she's been on the road or even at home with, uh, with Iowa.